What's up, everybody? Sully Erna here, back at Hometown Sessions, and today I am really, really excited to uh, introduce to you yet another dear friend of mine in the music world, somebody I've known for quite some time now. We go way back as friends, and we definitely go way back as kind of um, musical companions playing off of each other in the early days when Godsmack was just starting out. Um, but before I introduce this guy, I want to show you a little bit about what he does, so check this out. Yeah. 
guitar players I know out there in rock music today who wrote some of the biggest hits that you guys all know. Say hello to Mike Mushock. What's up, dude? What's up, my man? How you doing today? I'm good. How are you, man? I'm doing all right. Thanks for the kind words. Yeah, of course. You know, what do you think? I'm going to just trash you on the show? <laughs> not <laughs> you yet, anyways. You do, so I figured why not now, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really funny seeing some of those clips too, man, because uh, it brings me back to the early days, you know, no, some no of it either. anyways. And uh, man, it, I don't know if it makes me feel really good or really old, old. knowing how long yeah, we've no, been on this right. circuit for, right? I know. Well, I was thinking, I think the first time we played together was a warp tour, like a local stage. I think it was 98 oh, in wow. Northampton, Mass. Yeah. I remember wow. you guys had just started blowing up on AAF and we were doing well in the area and I forgot the promoter put us on and I think we played together that day. Wow. Yep. I definitely remember doing a club up your way once or twice. You guys yeah, were like like it, blowing in, up in that area and we infinity, came up and yeah. supported you guys up that way too. Yeah, totally. And that was the same thing. You guys were just, but you guys, you guys were like that though. You no. had like a song on the radio. AEF got behind you guys, and next thing you know, I mean, it just blew up. That part went fast. It seemed like the first three years before that wasn't so fast. But still, in the, in the big picture of the music industry, right. three years is pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. You know but what I mean? I, you know, well, you haven't counted the other 24 years. No. <laughs> no, dude. Please. I hear you. No, and please. actually, it was, it's, it's been cool looking back at the journey anyways, just because so many bands, as I'm sure they ask you too, like kids, young musicians asking you advice, they're always like, hey, what's the best advice to make it in this business? And I can't honestly give them that answer because it happens differently for everybody. It does, yeah. And, but when I, when I was um, thinking about our path, it's actually, you know, it was a cool story when I think back and look at it in hindsight, but when sure. it's happening, you're just in it. Right. And so you're like, totally. fuck, I got to sell another t-shirt and book another gig and try to sell a CD. Out of Nose the to the grindstone and just working. Yeah, totally. You know? Yeah. So it's not like that thing, but, but I, but our bands coming up in those days too. Um, I was talking to Clint Lowry a little bit about this, um, where it was like, how special music really was because we didn't have a lot of these things that stimulate us today. Sure. So like going to support your friends, going to watch your, your friends bands and all that was really important because that's what we had to do. And we loved doing it live totally. events where it was where it was at. And it wasn't always the big concert. That was a treat. Because yeah. growing up, you know, we didn't always have money and that kind of stuff. No so when you got to go see an Aerosmith or someone like that, it was like, oh, it's bigger than life. But totally. the regular club scene, everyone yeah. supported each other, and especially in the New England area. And that's and that's what I always said to everybody. That's I mean, listen, we got our opening gig for Limp Biscuit came from a friend of ours band from Connecticut, uh, Sugar Milk. The drummer called me and said, hey, because we used to have them come, like, you guys played with us. We used to, you know, friends of ours, we loved this band. They came and played with us up in, in the Western Mass area. And he's like, listen, I owe you a favor. We have this gig open for Limp Bizkit. You guys would be playing first. You'd get 20 minutes. You know what I mean? You just throw and go. I'm like, yeah, we're in. And But that's what ultimately led to us getting a record deal. Yeah. You know? And that was, and I, that was only because we were, we had other friends and other bands and we'd help each other out. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. And that's the way that it was back then. I mean, and it was funny. I remember coming through even like a couple of years later and all the places we used to play, they weren't really around anymore. It yeah. seemed like that whole scene just got, you know, yeah, was kind of dried up a bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 So those of you who are just tuning in too. So we got Mike Mushok here from the legendary band Stained, one of my <laughs> brothers. <laughs> and uh, also now uh, working with St. Sonia now for how many years? Since what? Yeah, no, 20, 2015. I think we started roughly. Adam and I started working together, you know. Adam from Three Days Grace. Correct. How, how do you pronounce his last name? Gaunt, Gauntier? Gauntier, yep. Gauntier. Yep. Is it yep. French? Yeah. <laughs> Canadian. Canadian. 
French Canadian. There you I go. That's close. It's just um, the way you said it, Gontier. Yeah. What the fuck is Mushak? Um, I don't know. I'm a mutt. Really? I was actually brought up Greek Orthodox, but Mushak is not a Greek Orthodox name. Oh, it's Mushak. Yeah. Oh, uh, you got the Mushak in there. I always called you Mushak. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you know what? It's been said so many different ways. Well, guy, because... kid, dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Dickhead. laughs> but 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 it's you you grew up Greek Orthodox, and you yeah. but do you know what Mush, Mushak is? I, you know, I was told it was like Russian or like Eastern, oh, wow. Eastern, you know, Europe, European type that's of name. That's cool. Yeah. So, but I've never come across another person with that name. Actually, when we first started touring, every hotel that I went in, I'd look when they had phone books in hotels. I used to go look to see if I could find anybody that had my last name. Oh, wow. And nothing, right? No, I never found it. And yeah, I, I, me too. You know, my name's very unique in that way, Erna. It's like I never heard of any Erna in the whole world growing up. Until I went to Italy and to right. Sicily, especially not even in Italy, because in, right. you know Italy in general, it's always Castiglione and something with an O <laughs> yeah, right, at the right, end, right. or Francelli or something. Yeah, like, yeah, you know? yeah. But but there was a lot in Sicily, um, and then I try to trace it back, and I think Erna was shortened over the years because it originally might have been like German or something like that, like Erna right. Hau or something right, like that. Right, 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 right. And yeah, yeah. Someone just I think a lot of up. names are changed like that over the years. Because all the Moors invaded Sicily, you know, and then it was like, it <laughs> they over. all banged everybody and mixed up the bloodline forever. Those were the days. I remember them well. <laughs> and the other wife. Yeah. When I had the big one. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, you know, uh, what, what do you remember the most about the early days of, you know, being in a band in Boston, like being in, in that, the Massachusetts local scene? Was your area more towards like Connecticut, New York, or were you guys more in the Boston? No, we were like way out Western Mass and Connecticut is uh, where, is kind of where like Springfield, we, Mass and all that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we started out of. We played all those, cl all the clubs in Springfield, you know what I mean? We're, that's, and that's where, I mean, that's where when we first started. I mean, you know, we we started out really as a cover band and always played originals, you know mm. what I mean? And, uh, we were able to take those, those gigs and where we'd like sell out these clubs playing covers to just doing the same thing, doing our music. You wow. know what I mean? So we kind of made that transition over a few years yeah. and, uh, and that's really kind of what led to us, you know, being able to ultimately get signed. So how did you and Aaron meet up then? Cause I don't, I don't even as a friend, I don't think I've ever even asked either one of you guys. That. No, like, how did sure. you guys connect? Man, it was funny. It was. Is uh, he from that area too originally? He was. He went to Long Meadow High, Long Meadow, Mass. And uh, he was out playing like acoustically, like, you know, like he does like, a solo thing. You know what I mean? He'd stand in the corner of a club with an acoustic guitar and, yeah. you know, play all night long, you thing, know. Yeah. Um, but that's not where I met him. I met him at a Christmas party at a friend of mine's house. He came with a friend and we were standing around the keg drinking and. Uh, the party ended abruptly. My buddy, my buddy flipped out. Somebody, he just had his hardwood floors redone and like somebody had spilled a candle and he's just started oh. beating people up and throwing everybody out. Oh. He was so pissed. Um, and I gave Aaron my number and Aaron didn't even have a phone at the time. I never heard from him again. I actually ended up moving into that house after I graduated college in 94. And my roommate was dating this girl who Aaron was trying to get a job from. And he asked about me. So it was like 10 months later, he called me and we actually got together. He played me some, and I was, you know, taught, you talked about the, you know, the 23 years leading up to what you did. Yeah. I had, you know, like 15 years trying to find somebody that could sing. Mm. You know what I mean? I had all these people that were, they were good, but there was never that person. And when I heard Aaron, I, I literally said, where have you been for 15 years? You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, because the kids just got such and, an amazing, and he was just doing his own thing, right? He wasn't with the, like a band, band. <laughs> yeah, no, he well, and he were had. You, a, were you? I was. Try, I just got out of college, so what happened was I, I had like a like a cover band in college. That I would just play on weekends just to make money. Uh, um, I did that for a little bit, and I was just trying to start another band and just find the right guys. And at the time, I I was talking to John who ended up being the drummer of stained. And when we met Aaron, he knew a bass player. Mm. Um, so the four of us got together. I remember it was November of 94, wrote three songs, like the first practice. And, uh, by January was our first gig. Uh, and so the bass player playing. that Aaron knew, was that your boy still in stained? 
Oh, no. That was a different guy? That kid, yeah, it's a different guy. That kid uh, only lasted, uh, it was about a year. We ended up having to make a change. But Johnny was somebody that was in, a, that was in another local band, and Johnny was the, the, the baddest bass player around. I mean, I used to go watch that kid in the band he was in. He actually, he was a friend, uh, friend of mine, Denny, played guitar, and this kid, Mike, on drum, and their band were like, they were just like such great, like, they play like Ingve songs. Oh, <laughs> shit, that, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they play like, you know, L.A. Guns, too, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, but yeah. Denny was just, a, a, he, and he still is a monster guitar player, and uh, and Johnny was just this killer bass player, and it was funny, they had a deal with uh, Giant Records, and their deal fell through, and Johnny was so bitter on music. I had called Johnny to play bass, and he's like, nah, I'm not into the music thing, man, I don't want to do it. Oh, and I remember wow. when we were looking for a bass player again, I called him again and, and he knew what like, we were playing covers and Johnny was, Johnny's famous quote was, he's like, you know, I'm cool doing the cover thing. He's like, I don't really know if I want to do the original thing that much though. So wow. he came and did it and, you know, obviously, you know, it's been around. That's his history. Yeah. Yeah. So that's funny because, um, we share a similar story when it comes to the bass player thing a little bit, because Robbie was also in that place. He was about 30 years old. And I had just come out of quitting music when I was around 25 or 26 because I had got that record deal with Stripmine. And, um, and then, uh, you know, the band just kind of self-destructed. There was no business sense and everybody was drinking and partying and I got right. fired and that kind of thing. And then um, I quit. I cut my hair off. I quit music. And I went and worked a job and I was done too. Um, and then uh, about a year later, the bug bit me, and I, and I wanted to play music again. So I called Robbie, who was a mutual friend of my sister's, and he was in the same place. He was a bass player. I knew him as a good bass player. I played in a lot of cover bands. Um, and he knew me as a drummer, but he was like, yeah, I'm 30 now. I'm, I'm not going to do this anymore. So I remember making a deal with him, and I go, okay, listen, I'm, I'm going to try this a different way, and I'm going to get off the kit, and I'm going to sing. And then, then I heard the phone like fall down the stairs and like, you know, he's what, what? He only knew me as a drummer. So I'm like, no, no I got this idea. I, I learned a few chords on the guitars and I swear to God, that was true at the time. Like a friend of mine from another band, I don't know if you remember a metal band from Boston called Wargasm. Yeah, of course. Wargasm. Yeah. yeah. So the drummer, Barry, uh, Barry, um, he had showed me some how to drop tune to uh, drop, drop D. D. Yeah, yeah. And so he's, I'm like, oh my god, now I can play the guitar because I don't have to bar easy. chord anything, right? right so that's right. how I really started playing guitar. But anyways, we went into the studio and it was just a train wreck. Like by the time I sang my first phrase, it was so bad that Robbie like walked right out of the fucking studio and it was bad, bad. That's good for the confidence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but. <laughs> But, 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 um, but he was in that same place. And so I made a deal with him. I said, listen, dude, let's just give it, give me three years. Like, let's put this thing together, not right. put any pressure on it. Let's just do it for fun, record some stuff. And in three years, when I turn 30, if we haven't signed a deal, I'll quit with you. And that's the deal we made. And I swear to you, it's a true story. And on my 30th birthday in February, really? we were already so on fire in the area and the labels were talking with us that obviously I couldn't quit then because we didn't sign till June of 98. But right. in February of 98 was my 30th birthday. It was that close to never playing again. I was really going to hang it up because I was sick of feeling like wow. a loser, you know? Like all my friends were getting nice cars and an apartment and had money, and I'm bumming five bucks off my sister and sleeping off her couch. And No, was, no, no, I hear you. But listen, man, you knew what you, you, knew what you were going to do. Yeah, it was, You know, yeah. you're driven and you you listen look you got it you yeah no it. it's just funny that we shit like some of the stories through you through like clint lowry through just people in general totally. it's funny how uh a lot of the stories are real similar you know um no absolutely well you know what's even funny you mentioned clint clint was in a cover band that used to come through western mass at a club that we used to play wait was, was it in, still rain he was in steel Shut rain those guys, <laughs> those guys used to come in and play all the time yeah. and well maybe like two or three times a year and yeah. it was funny i always make i always make a joke i go man you guys must have had really small suitcases because none of you ever wore shirts <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's They're still pretty like, jacked up too that dude is like guys, so into wasted they had all their moves like choreographed and the head spins and totally yeah, i mean they had it down and i mean it was so funny it wasn't until ye literally years later that i knew that that was Corey and clint that were in that band yeah yeah so, so I got to ask you a couple of questions, right? So 
I know in the early days for us, right? Because as you know, when you first get together with a new guy, like you had met Aaron, I had met right. Robbie, we put together some other musicians, we start doing the thing, and now we're yeah. going like, okay, cool, it's kind of cool, we're in a band, right? And yeah. then we're doing that again, and here we go. But I don't know how it was for you guys, but in the early days, like the brawls, did you and Aaron brawl? Were you guys fighters or were you pretty peaceful? Because no, me and we, Robbie fucking on stage brawling. Really? Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny. The old bass player that, that didn't make it, he was, it was, that was part he was of the it. fighter. Yeah, that was kind of part of it. Yeah, but come know? on. You got to come clean a little bit here. This is the don't bullshit me no, fucking no, no, show. No, I'm, I'm because I on, seen you and Aaron shut the door a couple of times and I heard <laughs> barking at each other. No, no. Yeah, no, that happens after being together for 25 years with somebody. You know what I mean? But no, I mean, in the early days, I think I was just super stoked to have somebody that was a great singer. So for me, yeah, yeah. it was like, if he's an hour late for practice, I'm like, that's cool, man. We're here. here. I, I was just happy that he even show up. Oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I don't remember any big brawls early on. At really? All. No, wow. I really don't. That's boring. Um, I know. Super, it was super boring. Dude, me and Robbie used to fucking jam, like, because I was crazy on stage, right? I was still yeah. angry when I was starting because I was just dealing with life still. Like, no mm -hmm. one had money. We weren't signed. No, sure. It was that whole yeah, yeah. thing, right? Yeah. So it was just kind of like, blah. And, and I was just vented. Like, once I found my thing on stage, I was just throwing shit, throwing mic stands, and Robbie's dodging shit. And he's, if he was a little hungover on stage and a fucking mic stand went by, by he'd fuck you. And, and on right. stage would be, fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah. If and Aaron then, threw a mic stand at me, it might be a little different. That never happened. <laughs> I didn't I throw it at him. It. I just threw it out of the way. You know, the drum is like ducking and shit. And, right, right, right. and then Robbie would throw his bass down. Fucking, I quit. And, on like right in front of the, like a cookout, you know, like yeah, the yeah, backyard yeah. cookout gigs. Right, right, right. Burr, would fight like, <laughs> it was, no, it, it there was, was crazy. There was none of that. I hit Aaron in the head once with the headstock on my guitar. That's the only thing that I can remember. Oh, I don't. There was, that yeah. was an accident, though. It wasn't. I'm sure, it was, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> yeah, no, no. There was, there was, there really wasn't. There wasn't. In fact, I remember. I look back on those days when we you used had to, like, no like fighters in the band, like your old drummer, the bass, but nothing. We had, we had a kid that Aaron brought in that it helped us out. You know, I, I, I don't call him a roadie, but he was just like this dude that he knew. And he was like, this dude was, he was scary. Like he, I remember like after a gig, I dude, I didn't, I didn't do drugs. I mean, I would drink some beers. That was about it. I remember he was getting set to load out and he came up to me and he pulled his eyes down and he's like, Hey man, do you see that? I just took a, an, optical i took a hit of acid i wanted to kick in <laughs> this was loading out is that it? i'm like i'm like you did what and this kid's like you know bald like lived in the projects like scary scary wow. and i remember once our we used to videotape a lot of stuff and our camera at a gig got stolen and I feel like I feel like such a dick to this day because I blamed him and I I went off on him outside. And I remember I was either air or something. They thought he was gonna fucking rip my head off and eat me because I mean this <laughs> he, was, he was a a tough dude. But I was so pissed because it's my camera and I thought he stole. And I come to find out like he, he didn't steal and I blamed him for it and I felt like shit about it. Wow. You know what I mean? Because I just kind of thought he was a scumbag. And yeah. I thought that's what he was gonna do and he didn't. Wow. So, I still feel bad about it. I mean, I just don't, you know what I mean? I just listen to you. So that was the fight. It wasn't in the band. That was the one thing that I can remember. There was a little, then we got, then we got Pete and Jeff who to this day still work for Stained. Do you have so, any of those lifers? I mean, you kind yeah. of cleared out a lot of, I mean, didn't you? No, we, we got definitely, you know, some people that like, you know, have been with us for a long time and since the early days and all that stuff. So um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of one thing that we would always pride ourselves in is keeping kind of like a good family. And that's of, same here. Yeah. Like half, half used to mix at that club that Steel Rain used to play. It used to be his pay, PA in there. Yeah, yeah, we used yeah. to play there all the time. It's Club Infinity in, in Western, uh, Western Mass in Springfield. And I mean, we used to get like these gigs for 50 bucks just to go play our songs like somewhere. And I used to take money out of my bank account to pay Jeff to come mix us. And I mean, mm. he just kind of came along with us when we made the first record. He recorded our first record, Tormented, at a studio that he had. 
And I mean, to this day, I mean, he still is our front of house guy. You know what I mean? They, he kind of came up in the ranks and same thing with Pete who now tour manages Aaron. And, uh, you know, yeah. he was my guitar tech when he started out. Yeah, and, he's a cool dude. I talked to yes, him a couple times. Since we had those, you know, so those guys have been around with us since the very beginning, day one. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Which Actually, is cool. we, we one of the girls that rode with us for a little while after you guys were coming off the road to do another record or something like that ended up coming on board with us. Um, but we got her from you guys, Sam. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, she rolled yeah. with us for a little while, too, and... She was great. Tour, tour managed a little bit, and then she moved into like production and wardrobe and things like that. But I just reconnected with her recently because I found a bunch of old videos from some funny ass moments backstage nice. when everyone was just hammering down and just doing right, dumb right, shit. Right. I should probably show some <laughs> of those things. That's actually pretty funny. Um, so here's another question I always wanted to ask you. I've been asking this lately because it seems like for the last few episodes we've had like different guitar players on. For some reason, it's just worked out that way. Sure. Um, Clint Lowry, Nuno Betancourt was on. Oh, nice! And uh, and I was asking them, and I was I was curious on you because you're really an amazing guitar player and a great songwriter, like really strong Thank you, man. songwriter. I I love the stuff that you guys write, especially the the ballad form stuff. Like I think it's been some of the most powerful ballads we've heard on rock radio that you did with Aaron and that kind of stuff. And I even love the stuff you guys are doing right now with the new band with Santa Sonia and all that. Thank you, man. Um, but who was your guy, like? Who was your guy that want that made you want to play guitar? Like, was no, there a sure. dude? Yeah, no, there there is. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm going to go back to when I was. Oh, I don't even know. Probably about the age my son is now. There was a, there was a guy in Springfield, Mass, named Tony McAlpine. Oh, and, I, I remember uh, him. Yes, and he. I don't used know to give how I remember that name, but I remember well, that. I mean, name. he's put out tons of instrumental records. He, he was like a uh, in, yes. He, he was. He's. A, I mean, the, the most incredible music. He was a classical pianist. I used to like literally go to his house and sit there and watch him play piano for hours. Oh, so you knew him, knew him. I took lessons from him. He oh, was from Springfield, wow. Mass. So he, like I started guitar when I was six. I played acoustic guitar for like six years. I had a friend that played drums. I got an electric. In fact, I can even show you. Listen, dude, here you go. This will be funny because you're from Mass. I don't know if you can see that. It says yeah, God's it music just, yeah, yeah, yeah. on the cape. Yeah. And the date of this is June 5th, 1982. And this is the receipt for my first electric guitar and amplifier. That's that I ever cool, bought. man. My parents had it and they gave it to me. They framed it and gave it to me. Wow. Like That's and, amazing. Uh, wow. You weren't kidding when you said you don't throw out anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> like, Nothing. You're a hoarder. I'm so not, but I've been learning to keep things because now as I get older, things are becoming more valuable to me, especially no, I when know, they're vintage. No, I, don't, I mean, that's, that's pretty badass that you have that, though. What's that? That's pretty badass that you still have that receipt from your My first guitar. My parents had it. What was the guitar? They, it was a Fender Bullet. Oh, cool. So yeah, it was, it was, a little it was like a brand thing. name. But anyway, so when I started playing electric guitar and jam with my buddy Jeff, and we would we would always play. I heard about this guy from Springfield, Mass. that could play because Eddie Van Halen was to me the one that was just, you know, I mean, there was Hendrix, there was Jimmy Page, but Eddie Van Halen, I he mean, was to the this guy, day, it's like, it that was Nuno's too. Class. And you can hear yeah. it, Nuno's playing. He's no, like, totally. Eddie Jr. Such a monster. I used to tell Nuno, I'm like, you know, if Eddie Van Halen wasn't out, like, you would have been that guy. And he goes, Sully, there wouldn't have been a Nuno if it wasn't for an Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, so anyways, this guy, I heard about this guy that played Eruption in Spanish Fly, like in their set. I'm like, oh, I got to meet him. And I found that he was giving lessons at this place in Springfield. And so I just started taking lessons from him. And wow. uh, I wanted to take an hour lesson. And within six months, our lessons were us soloing back and forth, trying to outdo each other. And then we would sit there for an hour. And actually, at the point where like, he would come to my house and play. I'd get a ride to his house. I mean, and he was, you know, in his twenties. Wow. And I'm just, I didn't know, you know that dude I mean? was a mass guy. Yeah. Springfield mass. He went to, uh, my mother was his math teacher. Wow. You know, I remembered the name as soon as you said it, but I couldn't remember how I knew the name. But as soon as I started to think about it, I remembered he was one of those Satriani, Ingve style, yeah, 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 Steve yeah, 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 kind yeah, yeah. of players. He, and I remember he hearing about him in the eighties, the late eighties. When yes, everybody he was changed shredding. everything for wow. me. I mean, he wow. was definitely my guy. I mean, he, uh, yeah, so, I mean, and when I met Tony, that's when I started practicing literally like 8, 10, 12 hours a day. I can years. see an EVH right behind you. <laughs> yep. You got one. I love that amp. Is it a yeah. 5150? 
Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And so, yeah. so was he also the guy that got you? So what do you, what do you play for guitars? What's your choice? Well, no, that kind of changed. I, I kind of, well, back then was, you know, it was the, you know, Eddie Van Hill and Kramer with the Floyd Rose, you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That was for years. But you're known to play a seven uh, string. Yeah, right. Exactly. I play baritone. So the tune down, but so when we did the last stain record, I started soloing again. Cause look, when I got out of college and I, I had done the whole shred thing and I used to write instrumental music cause I didn't have any singers. So I used to just play everything and do it all myself. Yeah. I did that for years and I just kind of got sick of it. And I went to, I, I actually was supposed to go play in Tony's band. He called me, you know, years later and asked me to play in his band right when I started college and I left college to do that. And it ended up not happening. So I was super disappointed and I went back to school and I ended up getting a degree in electrical engineering. And to do that, my 12 hours a day of practicing I ended up putting into school because that's what you got to do if you want to get, you know, that degree. So uh, when I got graduated in college in 94, that's when I that's when I met Aaron was that year. And that's when I started again. That's when, like, you know, corn was out and all the detuned stuff was out and nobody yes. was soloing anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, you know. I just want to do this. I, I was, I was loving, you know, that aggressive, angry, you know, yeah. you know, metal. Yeah. And uh, so that's when I kind of went and I started, I took one of my guitars and I put a B string on and I took the high E string off. I stopped soloing. And then we were doing some demos and somebody said, you ever play a baritone guitar? I said, no. So there was this Novax, which is like this fan fret guitar. I tried one of those. And I'm like, the thing played because I, I it struggled to keep the, the detuning in tune with the intonation and with the strings being so loose. So when you baritone, you stretch it out, you know, it's kind of in between a bass and a guitar. Yeah. So, uh, so I did baritone with PR. I did. So Ibanez what's for, the extra string that a seven string carries? Is it the I lowest do, one? Yes. Oh. I add, so I add another low B, but I tune that down to F sharp actually. But, but is I, it the same gauge as an E string? Uh, no, I use a it's 75. It's actually thicker? It's a seven, I use a 75. Oh, wow. And that's yeah, tuned down to what, a, B or A? F sharp. Oh. <laughs> I go even lower. So you talk about the single the single finger thing. So I do a drop D from the sixth string down, and then I do another fifth below that to the F sharp, so I can, I can do the single finger on the, the seventh string to the sixth string, and then single finger from sixth string to fifth string. Wow. And I can get all kind of crazy different chords from there. And I see all you guitar players out there that are watching this. Now you have some tips right from Mike about yeah. what the fuck. I don't when even the, know what he's talking the, about. What I can barely was, play fucking six. Dude, come on. Give me a break. You've written some pretty damn good songs. So. <laughs> Trust me. I've fooled everyone for a long time. I'm yeah, I know you. I'm You're pretty hack. talented between the, the singing, the guitar, the drums, the piano. It's all drums though. Yeah. It's all drums. Thank God I learned how to play the drums because when people ask me like, hey, what's the most important instrument? What would you say? I mean, the drums do keep the beat. Yeah, I mean. Drums, I think, know, are one of the, the most, backbone. because drums teach you timing, it teach you rhythm, yeah. pocket, all that yeah. stuff, which is critical in music, right? Because whether you're, you could play great piano, you could play great guitar, but if you don't know how to stay in rhythm and in time. Nope. So for me, it's always been drum. Even when I sing, it's rhythmic. When I write a riff, it's rhythmic. It's sure. not complicated what I write. I'm right. just always playing drums in my head, so that's how it comes right. out. You, know you just I mean? translate it into the, the, the melody of the, of the chords that you're yeah. playing. But even yeah. the, you know, the stop and go stuff, that kind of right. thing, it's percussive, you know what I mean? I do. That's what I prefer, but it's also because I was never a trained guitar player. I was never right. a trained pianist. But I had to self-teach myself those things um, even vocals or whatever. Drums were the only thing I had some training in when I was younger, you know? Sure. But even that, sure. I quit by the time I was like 11 years old because I found it easier to hear something and play it than to read sheet music. No, exactly. And that's the same thing. Like, even me, for that's why I was so discouraged. I did this, when you're six, I mean, what are you going to do when somebody hands you a guitar? You know what I mean? So... <laughs> There was no YouTube Shit at the bow time. And arrows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> so I did all those Mel Bay books for years, and that's why when I finally met Tony, he was like the one that was like kind of changed everything for me, and I really got to see the guitar in a completely different way, and uh, it just kind of opened up a whole new world. You know, that's awesome. He was definitely so, my. Biggest so then influence. we fast forward so many years later, and then somehow. I don't know. What did you, you and guys in Stain take a break or did you split up? Were you fighting? <laughs> no, we were Aaron. How Aaron did you get to the Santa Sonia part? Oh yeah. Yeah. Santa Sonia. Yeah. Well, Aaron wanted to pursue, you know, a country career. 
Oh, you know? that's right. He went out and did that. I forgot about that. Yeah. And then I got to play. I went and played with Newstead actually in 2013, which was which was great to be able to uh, to I've get seen out you. there. Yeah. Yeah, we seen you. We did a gig together somewhere because I remember we you did like a fit, Newstead in the dressing room something. afterwards. Yeah, like a state fair or something. Yes. I think it was. You guys, I remember you guys crushed it that cotton time. candy stands. Yeah. Thanks, John Brannigan. <laughs> <laughs> Stop putting me next to the fucking pretzel box. They, they paid us in sausage. I don't know. How- <laughs> <laughs> I hate those state fairs. I hate them so much. He used to, Dude, oh, I love them. You do? I love them. I, some of them I don't like. I feel weird because I can see like parents pushing around the kid I in the know. stroller and up I there. Know. Fuck. And I, I go, know. this isn't the vibe. Like, I know. they get the bingo fold out chairs all, all w- tied, <laughs> wired together. <laughs> Ew, COVID. Put your tongue in your mouth. Yeah, I know. Sorry, um, sorry. Spread um, the COVID. <laughs> I felt it. Ew. I know. I'll wear my mask next time. I, I just, there's always something weird about it. I used to call John and get so mad. I'm like, stop fucking. I don't want to play any more cotton candy stands and. <laughs> This no. shit. He used to make me fucking bananas. So anyway, sorry. So so say no, Sonia. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, in fact, I remember it was actually the last Newstead show we did. We were on the Megadeth tour, and the last show was in Toronto. And I remember that's where Adam lived. And I remember calling him and saying, hey, man, my last show is in Toronto. And you know how I tried to do that song with you that ended up being The Haunted? I was trying to write with different singers, and Adam was one of them. I Staying a tour in three days, Grace, Adam and I were friends. I always, as I love your voice and Aaron's and, you know, I loved Adam's voice too. I always thought he's just such a great singer. Yep. And uh, so we got together at that last day. We worked on a few songs. I stayed over in Toronto after that last show. And that's what ended up turning into Santa Sonia because he wasn't in three days, Grace anymore. And everybody else I was writing with was in bands. And so we had a record deal still. So we had done a demo, sent it off. And I, uh, his label heard it and that's, you know, they signed us and that's wow. what led to that first record. You so know. who, so tell me again, who it is besides you and Adam? Well, it's kind of changed. It's, Adam and I are the ones that are the same right now. And then, uh, Sal from Stain played drums on the last record and Adam's, uh, cousin Kale, who was an art of dying is playing bass now, but Corey Lowry did the first, first record in the first tour cycle. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. And Rich Badeau played drums on that. And then we ended up, you know, making a change and actually made a change, change again, because I, uh, um, well, I don't know what's going to happen. Stain had all these gigs that we were planned for this summer. Like, I think you guys had a summer tour planned yeah, too. So everything kind of went by the wayside, you know? Yeah. yeah. Are you done guys done for the year? Yeah. Well, we, you know, cause we were just pushing one more, tour anyways we were going to do the summer radio festival things that we all do right um and then we were going to do this like final hurrah legends rise tour thing in like the july august time frame right but then we were just like you know what we were we were spinning the tail end of this album cycle anyways so this is kind of a blessing in disguise for us where we get off early we get to spend the rest of the year writing you sure. know i might try to do this and a, and a solo record before the year's over and then uh you know I, I said, let's just push out. where Everyone's going to be fighting and struggling to get those fall slots if it even happens, right? Which I personally don't think it's going to. I don't either. Because people are still, even if they allowed it, I don't think people are going to be that comfortable yet being smashed up against each other. I and, mean, and if they did, some of them are going to be like, yeah, probably we need to replenish our savings account before we go and drop a hundred bucks on a concert ticket or whatever, you know? I mean, dude, I, I told you for years, for years, I said I was never going to do a, uh, you know, I, some opportunities like the restaurant type of thing. And I think, you know, I, I became partners at the six string up at Patriots place, which is the old Toby Keats outside of Gillette stadium. Yeah. Yeah. And it was actually literally a year ago last week was we opened and, uh, and it was, we had a really good, really good business plan. Things were going really well. We had national acts coming in, uh, you know, local bands that were doing really well great partners that were running the restaurant and bar side and we were just booking the entertainment and uh then this once in a lifetime pandemic hits yeah amazing and we right? planned on this thing we, we had everything I, there was there was one guy that we worked with this guy tom who who literally because these guys that are partners own a bunch of restaurants in boston so they they really had everything planned they know how to do this you know what i mean yeah so that's why i felt real comfortable about it and i said to tom like 
dude, you never planned for a, a once in a lifetime pandemic when we were sitting here yeah. trying to run all our numbers yeah. to figure no, this know, out. Yeah, there's no rule book for that one. That just goes off. Yeah, I know. I don't even want to get into that topic. Because it's such a shit show, political shit show to me that it's like, it is. I just don't. I'm gonna even just know. do me, and you guys figure it out. And no, I think I I'm gonna, I'm gonna like root for the Americans and fuck the politicians and let them fight about their Democrats and their Republicans. I and know. let's just hope that everyone's paying attention enough to like watch the facts, stop yeah, believing all the bullshit, and like just use your common sense and get back out and. You're smart. People. I saw a sign Americans on somebody's lawn that said anyone competent 2020. You know what I mean? It's just, like, <laughs> just give me somebody that, you know what I mean? I don't yeah, know. it doesn't even matter about that. Honestly, man, I don't even have a problem with what Trump's doing and all that stuff. I think all that doesn't bother me as much as it bothers me to hear every other person turn yeah. into a fucking medical expert and a politician. Yeah. Like yeah. those bitches on The View. F*** them. I hate that f***ing show. I'm so over it. <laughs> They're going to sway everybody I, to the I, I left. You, the quarantine's really got you if you're sitting home watching The View. <laughs> no, I don't watch it, but like I'll catch up on the news once in a while, and there's always some clip of them, and someone didn't wear a mask, and she goes, oh, oh my God, I thought you were like a more responsible, smart. I thought you were smart. You're not smart. I'm like, shut f***ing all of you. Shut up. Your, your yeah. job isn't supposed to be to uh, no, no, to sway people else. one way or yeah, the yeah, other, yeah. right? You're yeah. an entertainer. Like, you're sure. supposed to get people's minds off of it. Talk about something else. Don't we don't care about what your f-ing opinion is. Yeah, f-ing hate them. Um, anyway, say to Sonia. Say to Sonia. And so, uh, <laughs> so it, it's funny because um, for for everybody watching right now who don't who does not know this part, um, a while back uh, I was uh, Mike had called me up and we were talking about doing a collaboration for a long time and we had this opportunity to write a song together. And we ended up coming up with that song that people hunted. know now is called The Hunted. Yeah. And, uh, and we, we first kind of cut the demo of it in Chicago with Johnny K, right? Chicago, right. Yeah. is it? Yeah. 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 So tell, tell them a little bit about that because I think that ended up, was that the first single on this last record you guys It did? was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. First single off the last record. Yeah. And we I totally forgot together. about that song, by the way. And then when I heard it again and you were like, hey, we're going to like breathe some life into this thing and put it out on the record. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't even remember how that goes. And then you sent it. And I'm like, oh, I, really, I actually like, I forgot that it had a yeah. nice, you know, good, it's yeah, a good yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was cool. Um, and I, I had, uh, you know, a manager for all along. He's like, oh, you got to do something with that song. You got to do something with that song. I love that song. So anyways, you know, we, we finally were able to, which is good. But yeah, no, we were on tour together. I remember we were close to Chicago and I think I just, I kind of kidnapped you. I was just like, dude, come That's on. right. Let's go. We got right. your bus. Get your driver. We're driving to Chicago. We woke up outside the studio. That's we right. That's right. Oh there. yeah. My God, you have a good memory, man. Yeah, we that, was, that was, that was God smack stained part two. Because we had right. did a tour yeah. back in what oh one or something or yeah right before Break the Cycle came out we toured with you guys that was a, that was a great tour man that was really that was fun that was fun. one of my favorite memories touring you guys were one of them in the early days Metallica was obviously one of our most fun tours we've ever sure. done um, the, you know the Sabbath one that we did was really fun there was certain like pinnacle moments that I remember being some of my m- most favorite touring moments and you guys. Um, yeah, no, first that tour was... was definitely one of them because um, both bands were just breaking and there was like yeah. this real kind of mutual respect and there was. brotherhood was in general, which has always totally. kind of sustained over the years, which has been great knowing you guys. And, no, absolutely. And, and still, you know, being relevant is kind of fun at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> at least the pandemic sure. didn't wipe us out. <laughs> Fuck you, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, no, it's been... Uh, that was definitely a, a, a great tour. I remember that one for sure. I mean, it was kind of for us, it was kind of for everything really kind of exploded too. You know what I mean? And it yeah. was, it was just a fun time and just uh, great to be out with you guys and, and doing that for sure. Yeah, that was really cool. And so what, what's coming up for you guys now? What's your plan? Is it going to be stained? Is it going to be St. Sonia? Like, is it both? Well, it's- we had, we had <clears throat> planned it. Cause I thought we were stained was doing this tour where, we were, we were going to have another guitar player fill in on St. Sonia and, and do the dates that they had because they were supposed to go out on this Breaking Benjamin tour this summer. And, uh, you know, obviously everything got canceled. Right now, St. Sonia has a European tour in October. Again, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that. You know what I mean? So, um, But you, you're working on Stain too? 
well, right now, I mean, Stain's kind of, I think, put off till next year. Ah. For the most part, you know? So, what do you mean? As far as live shows or just writing? Yeah, the live shows. The live shows. Mm. Yeah. Are you so, guys going to, are you thinking about another record? I don't know, you man. Don't know. I don't I have a bunch of music, you know what I mean? So Is it all uh, dependent on kind of which way Aaron sways with the country yeah, thing? Yeah, I mean, that? yeah. He's, he's still he's, loving that thing, huh? Yeah, he, he does he well, man. sucks at country. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love I that know. dude. I just I just had a phone call with him the other day. By the way, fuck you, Aaron, because he promised he was gonna come on and be one of the guests, and now he's ghosted me ever since. And I'm like, you shut up, really? Yeah. And by the way, listen, I'm gonna say this for the first time right now. Nobody even knows this yet. So everybody watching, listen to the man here. I am slowly building a little thing here that I want to. I have to finale this show at some point because. I have a couple records to write and I cannot continue just to be a talk show host. Nice. <laughs> I'm doing this to have some fun. I like to stay in touch with the fans. It's been exciting. It's been real, you know, it's been cool. But at some point I want to play some music, right? right. And then I got to get off of this thing because I need to like no, write focus. some music and start yeah, yeah. getting ready for 21. Right. Um, so I've been collecting um, little pieces from some of the uh, people, my friends that have been on the show and anyone else that, you know, is wanting to send in a piece. And then I want to kind of do a finale special, an hour or two hour special, something where it's just kind of bounces from us to, you know, Brent and Zach from Shine Down, and hopefully something from you and Aaron. And like, right. I would love to just get a piece from you or a piece from Aaron. Like, even if they're separate, I don't care. But just kind of build this cool little live from the living room thing. Sure. And maybe use that as the last one. So it would be great to get a piece from you. For sure. I'm still going to hound Aaron. Don't, if you see this Aaron, if someone sends you, as a matter of fact, everybody watch right now, go look up his social media and be like, Sally said, fuck you for ghosting him, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. Do it. Just say, Sally said I could do this. Fuck you right, for ghosting right. him. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll try to pull him on at some point. I, it, it'd be cool to catch up with him too. No, absolutely. Um, uh, but I was just curious because, um, uh, you know, I know that we have this this time this year, and I was just wondering if you're just going to try to spend it writing or working on a new record or whatever. You know, oh, always kind of working on that and backlogging ideas for whenever we need it. You know what I mean? So yeah, definitely yeah. working on those types of things. And honestly, I just been doing a bunch of stuff around the house and with the family. Yeah, as you should. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's kind of a blessing in disguise. I will say this, Mike. <clears throat> a lot of people are kind of like they're they're stuck on this kind of like i can't do anything right now whatever i'm like yeah but how many people have bitched and complained over the years that like you don't have time too much. Sure they're feeling, i never yeah. i can never see my no. kids and i, have I mean to work. listen it, it slowed everything down because we with the kids with their school and my my daughter and her horses and my son with baseball and they're going to be here and there and it's like you're crossing paths and it just brought everybody here dinner together every night yeah Kids are in the office. Guess what, too? School. Dad used to be on tour all the time, right? You were constantly on the road. And like, yeah. how many times were you out there for months and months and years sure. at a time thinking like, man, I really miss watching yeah. my kid grow up. I missed yeah. a lot of those years myself and sure. I can't get those back, but I'm doing my best right now to just kind of be present, even though present. like exactly. my family isn't together. Me and Jen split up back in 2009, but right. I'm, I'm good friends with her. I have a great relationship with my daughter. Right. She lives in Framingham. I live this way. And so, um, you know, it's just one of those things I still want to be present and get as much time as I can. Cause I know once they're, you know, this clears and we're back at it, it here we go yeah. again. Right. No, totally. So, and then next totally. thing you know, it's going to be like, Hey, I'm engaged. And I, you know, oh shit. <laughs> So. Grandpa Erna? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. We're not there yet, man. I'm not there yet. Okay. No, 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 no. Someday. <laughs> Someday. No, I'm not ready yeah. for that yet. Um, I have to take my son to, uh, a drive by birthday party. <laughs> Are you really? Wow. Well, that's being a good dad. Yeah. So that's a good thing. All right. So before you go, go before I cut you loose and, and I always save this for the end because sometimes I bring it up in the middle of the chat. People are like, Oh my they, God, they sport, hang up. sports talk. Uh, so oh, shut no, up. Not me, dude. I love but just, let's go. Let's just, where, where you at with the pads? Brady uh, gone. What's going listen, on? I, <laughs> Just I, I mean, listen, you knew it was coming to an end, right? At some point, but yeah. it, it broke my heart. And I, but you could, 
the writing was on the wall. I remember partway through the season last year and you're hearing about his contract and I'm like, nobody doesn't let you franchise them. And without leaving. I mean, you knew that he was going to leave, right? I mean, it's just... Uh, How ironic is it now Gronk's coming back all of a sudden, those two pairing up. I'm like, yeah. Something went on behind behind the scenes and they're not spewing it, and I don't like that. I think Brady knew all, all of last year that he was... Whenever he signed him to a, an extension, you know what I mean? And they made him sign that contract and he said, you can't franchise me. I mean, I think he knew all last year he was gone. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's obvious, right? I mean, but yeah, I listen... I think it's going to be exciting to watch those guys play in Tampa. I'm super bummed that it's not here. I'm still a Pats fan for life. I mean, listen, obviously Belichick thinks Stidham has something, you know, I will well, have to see. And Belichick that. we trust. So, right. I, I guess we'll right? see. I mean, we know what he could do with Tom. He made him, but now I, we'll I, see what he can do again. I'm actually surprised he didn't go when Tom went. Cause I thought they were going to go all together, but I did. Yeah. I, I just feel like actually Bill didn't want Tom back. Or if he did, he'd be here. See, that's what I think is something went on. And even though they said, no, no, we made our peace. I'm like, I don't know if they made their peace enough because yeah, Robert I, Kraft I mean, was coming on the news last night and it, it said, oh, I'm going to ask him about what's going on with Brady. And then the guy kind of asked and then Robert Kraft just dodged the whole question and wished yeah. him the best. I'm like something. something but I mean, uh, dude, Brady made Patriots place, right? I mean, that's all built upon that success that those teams ha that team had for 20 years. Yeah. And uh, I got to say the run that we've had here in new England, so, you know what I mean? Can't it's complain. Just been, it's just been unbelievable. Can't complain. I just wanted to continue that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's because we went from being one of the worst teams to this amazing team. And now we have no fucking clue what we're going to be. So it's, I back, know. you know what it's back to real quick. It's back to watching football. Like everyone else watches football. Are we going to win? Are we going to lose? Fuck, a nail biters. Here we go. <laughs> well, that was the thing about last year. I mean, there was games that, you know, there were certain games that you, that you know, they pull out of. And like that Miami game that they ended up with. I mean, that was really the turning point when they lost that Miami game yeah. you know, at the end of the year. I mean, that yeah, was, yeah. Uh, they lost the bye week. You know what I mean? And Totally. It, yeah. It was, it was, it was, listen, go take care of your son, man. I love you like we'll a brother. We'll still go to a game though, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, man. Yeah. We're going to be around. with the Hello, COVID. When when can, you need can we song? go to games? When do you need that song by? Just bring it whenever you send it. Just send me a link when you're ready. Send me a link. I'll set it all up for the fans. Okay, all Sounds right. Good. I'll do you that. heard yeah. that, everybody? Mike Mushok's gonna send me some music. If you don't do it, I'm gonna call you out on the next fucking guest. <laughs> God damn it! Hey, listen, man. Have a good time with your son. Thanks for coming Thanks, on, man. and uh, give us some new music soon. All right. Tell the guys it, in Santa Sonia. I said, what's up? Absolutely. Let's listen, man. Anytime you know that, whatever you need from me, I'm here for you, buddy. Okay. See that little button that says leave the room? Goodbye. <laughs> so that's it, everybody, man. Another episode of Hometown Sessions is closing up. Uh, I just want to thank Mike Mushok again. Mushok for coming on, who uh, has written some of my favorite songs in rock music, honestly. Um, and... Uh, that's it. We will see everybody next time right back here in Hometown Sessions. And I'm going to come at you with some new, not new, but with some music soon from not only myself, and I have a little special kind of trio thing that I'm thinking about doing, um, but also some of the guests that you've seen on. Um, but I do have to wrap this up at some point, and I do want to let all of you know that, that this isn't going to last forever. I'll bring it back. But I am going to have to wrap this at some point because I have a lot of work to do and this is becoming a full-time job. So I love you, but I got to go. See you next time. Peace. Uh -huh.